One afternoon, at the height of his fame, the Paralympian Oscar Pistorius had a journalist named Michael Sokolov over his house. He asked me if I'd ever fired a gun before. I said, no, I, I hadn't. He said, well, we got to go to the gun range. Well, he was thrilled when a couple of my shots turned out to be on the bullseye. And he said something to me like, you ought to do this more. You could be pretty deadly. At the time, Sokolov didn't think twice about it. Maybe what I saw as a guy who was an adrenaline freak, maybe I should have seen him as just flat out dangerous. In retrospect, I think that the gun that we shot that day was the gun that shot Riva. Back then, Oscar Pistorius was considered the greatest Paralympian of all time. He was a sprinter from South Africa who ran on two carbon fiber legs. People around the world celebrated him, idolized him. They knew him simply as the Blade Runner. Here goes Pistorius, look at him go. Oscar Pistorius absolutely storming away. In 2012, he made history when he became the first amputee sprinter to compete at the Olympic Games. How does it feel to be an inspiration the entire world over? Times Magazine says you're one of the 100 most influential people in the world. Then, six months later, everything changed. The South African police have charged Oscar Pistorius with murder. The Olympic athlete was a... On Valentine's Day 2013, Pistorius shot and killed his girlfriend, Riva Steenkamp. The public was captivated by the story, this former hero, and his fall from grace. But in the ensuing media circus, we lost sight of the serious issues at stake here and the real people involved. People like Riva Steenkamp. She was like a mother lion. She was protective and strong and fierce and loving. This was someone's daughter, but she was not important enough despite the fact that she was brutally murdered. This story is about a country that needed a hero. The fact that he had a disability and was overcoming it felt like it stood for all of the things about South Africa that had held us back for so many years. And supported that hero, no matter what. Our heroes are very important to us, and we are very anxious not to tarnish those images. It's about violence against women. She was very scared, and she felt like if she was going to argue with him, it would have been dangerous, and she hid the gun under the bed. Race and privilege, and how they intersect. White people in South Africa grew up with a strong sense of paranoia, heavily armed. His mom wanted him to be able to protect himself if the black people attacked him. And the warning signs? We all missed along the way. Because he was Oscar Pistorius, people would just let it be. In this podcast, we're going to tell the Oscar Pistorius story in a different way. Through the eyes of the people that Pistorius impacted, the lives he devastated, and the wake he left behind. At the end of the day, I just wanted Oscar to say, I'm sorry, this is what I did, and, and, and that was never going to happen. I'm Tim Rowan. And coming August 26th from Religion of Sports and PRX, this is False Idol.